Hello, I'm Karina Morocco with EBD Group, and with me today is Dr. Muhammad Hussein, board certified in oncology and hematology and current board member at Stardom Therapeutics. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Hussein. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Karina. Appreciate it, and thanks for the intro. So you previously held a role as corporate vice president and global lead of multiple myeloma at Celgene, and now you currently serve as a board member and the hematologic malignancies lead at Stardom Therapeutics. Maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit more about Stardon and why you joined. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the uh, for the question. Um, Stardon is is a clinical stage um, biotechnology company that's focused on hematologic malignancies, and the company basically is building on the broad and extensive knowledge that's available on lenalidomide in the different hematologic malignancies. Currently, the company is targeting new indications where lenalidomide does not have a label, but also in, in indications where lenalidomide is approved, enhanced, we're targeting enhancing the efficacy and the tolerability in those other uh, indications. Um, how I knew about or found out about the company, I was in a meeting um, that the company presented uh, really interesting data on the delivery mechanism. And um, it basically, I found out very quickly that they were going to be looking at lenalidomide as a target compound for that delivery mechanism. It made a lot of sense to enhance that how that delivery mechanism uh, could potentially enhance the efficacy of the drug, but also more importantly, that how it would enhance the safety of the compound. Combining both together it really will basically rejuvenate uh, 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 lenalidomide, and, and lenalidomide have been a game changer in hematologic malignancies, especially in multiple myeloma. But I think this can be the second coming of the drug where it basically can be a game changer one more time by in enhancing the immune efficacy of the compound as well as enhancing the safety. Great, and so can you introduce a little bit more and the company strategy for STAR LLD? Yeah, and the, 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 the whole concept is really on how you would deliver Revlimid in a way that would enhance the efficacy and would enhance also the tolerability. So with the two delivery systems, there is a sub-Q system and a patch system, a skin patch system. Both of them, what they do is they significantly reduce the dose that's given to the patient by probably 50% plus or minus, um, you know, 5% here or there. But on, on, on top of that, you, you don't get the peaks and troughs that go with the oral formulation. So part of the trough challenge is after it hits trough, there is about um, 12 hours, maybe slightly less that the patient, it doesn't have really any effective dose of the lenalidomide in their system, which sort of gives the, uh, the the cancer cells, and this is in any heme malignancy, give the cancer cells time to sort of develop resistance, but also takes the uh, foot off the accelerator for the immune system. So having a consistent dose, an area under the curve 24 seven would be a significant enhancement to the immune system and, 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 and hypo, hypothesis wise, it might actually decrease the incidence of the resist that happens from the direct kill. Um, so that, that part is really an, an important part. The other part that's really significant is um, the GI toxicity, uh, the uh, myelosuppression that does occur, all that stuff is minimized because you're not, you're giving a lower dose and you're not hitting the peak that's usually associated with the side effects in the majority of the drugs. So the, the program basically takes the, uh, let's say the Revlimid in uh, the CLL and we'll get to that in a little bit but we'll take that to the CLL where uh, Revlimid was basically almost fully developed for CLL by Celgene. However, though, because of some safety concerns, 
the, the development stopped. So we're going to build on all the data that's there from the phase twos and phase threes that were conducted in uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And with the, like I mentioned to you, the enhanced efficacy and enhanced tolerability um, would, would, would pre certain that we'll just go there and, and be able to sort of capture this area, which unfortunately we're not able to capture um, uh, when, when cell gene uh, was uh, doing their development for the reasons I stated uh, before. So that is, that is really a, a, a critical piece. And it's, it's an, even though you see a bunch of drugs in CLL, this area is really definitely needed because regardless of which drugs you have in CLL, patients are not cured and they end relapsing. And it's really critical to be able to maintain these responses and enhance the depth of the response. So the uh, minimum residual disease and minimum or measurable residual disease and in, in achieving a negative measurable residual disease is really uh, key, especially in CLL, the data shows that those are the patients that do very well. So we're hoping that Revlimid would do both and enhance that depth of response, but also maintain that depth of response. Great, and so why is this product expected to be superior to the oral form in multiple myeloma? So for, for, for a couple of reasons, which I kind of insinuated to in, 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 in the last couple of questions, one uh, is going to be really uh, critical, which is basically you have a continuous level where the oral you really don't. With the oral, you basically take the drug, the half-life of the drug is a couple of hours, and then after 12, 14 hours, you basically don't have an effective dose of the drug in the patient, while with the patch or with the sub there will be a consistent level of the drug, which will basically continue to stimulate the immune system and also will continue to have the uh, kill activity on the direct kill activity on the tumor cell. So that is um, one critical component that differentiates the patch or the sub-Q from the oral. The second part is because you're giving a lower dose and the levels in the blood are, are lower, so you don't get that peak in the level that would sort of push the toxicity. You don't get that, and it's basically a steady level under the curve that will uh, enhance the safety tolerability. Mainly, basically, the GI symptoms will be should be significantly decreased. The myelosuppression, low platelet count, low neutrophil count any severity of the anemia that will be lowered as well. So that enhanced activity and enhanced tolerability should result really in an excellent outcome. Great, and you touched on this a couple of times, but can you describe the CLL study design a bit further? Yeah, so the, the CLL study is, is, is basically that three studies in, uh, in, 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 in one. Um, it, there is a master protocol that basically looking at three different segments of the uh, CLL patients. So the, 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 there is the group of relapsed refractory. That's a group that basically have seen a BCL2, <clears throat> excuse me, BCL2 inhibitor, have seen a BTKI, and, and failed those, and then they come and we utilize the Ravlomid as a uh, salvage approach. So that 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 is a, a, a critical group because that actually has a good potential for a registration strategy. And then there is the patients that um, in CLL who I mentioned to you that maximum minimal residual disease or uh, measurable residual disease that is achieved, but then it's not achieved in anyone. It depends on what induction regimen you're using. But um, the the group that the, the minimum residual disease is not achieved, which is, can run between thirty percent up to sixty percent, we would utilize Ravlimid following the treatment and see if we can enhance that number to kind of have captured a larger sum of patients to have the minimum residual disease. The criticalness of minimum residual disease in CLL is basically those patients who do achieve it on and are maintained on it, they have a better progression-free survival and more likely than not and a better overall survival. So that, that is another arm of the study. And then the third arm of the study is combining it with venetoclax to 
do achieve two things. One is enhance the depth of response of an endoclax, get about 70% of the patients would achieve that minimum residual disease. We're hoping to get that to 90 plus percent, but then maintaining that with venetoclax, as you know, regardless of what type of response those patients achieve, they eventually relapse. And we're hoping that in with the combination, we enhance the depth of the response, but also enhance the durability. So those sort of in that master protocol are going to be the three components or three groups of patients that we're going to target. Great, well, thank you for expanding on that. And thank you so much for talking to me today, Dr. Hussein. it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Karina. Thank you again.